This is Leakin Park, 1,216 acres of deep woods surrounded by some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in West Baltimore. The park is known to locals as Baltimore's open-air cemetery, and for good reason. Since the 1960s, over 80 bodies have been found here, and there's probably a bunch more that haven't been. Three weeks ago, there was a brutal murder that took place here. So brutal, in fact, that I decided to make this documentary about it. We don't have all the answers yet, and some of the things in this documentary we may have gotten wrong. But eventually, the truth will come out. I'm standing up here on the ridge line overlooking Winans Meadow in Leakin Park. And Winans Meadow is uh, right down here. There's a parking area and a bathroom and trails that go both ways along the Gwyn Falls. On January 30th, 2018, which was just a couple of weeks ago. A hiker was walking along a trail off of Franklin Town Road, and they came across an odd sight. There was a rock next to a well, though it's not really a well, but I'll get into that later. The rock was charred, and they were perplexed. So they looked down inside of this well and saw the body of Vishon Kamal Conyers at the bottom of the well. He had been set on fire and suffered major trauma, uh, which led to his death. I am disturbed by this murder. I'm equally disturbed that no one seems to be talking about it. There is a killer or killers out there, free right now, who have uh, no problems killing someone, setting them on fire and throwing them down into a well. This is scary and this person or persons needs to be brought to justice as soon as possible. This is the trailhead that leads to the crumbling sewer where Vashon Conyers' body was found. Vashon was 30 years old. He was a father and a son. No matter what trouble he may have been in while he was still alive, he didn't deserve this. This violent, horrific ending. I shot this footage only a few days after the murder had occurred. The police hadn't even released a name yet. I had so many questions, and all I had to go on was this crime scene. Could some of the answers be here? I'm not sure, but I just want to know how this whole thing went down. on the ground. Let's 
say Hugh Vest Request Death Maybe they mean West Baltimore So if we, if we look at this scene here, there's the rock there which is burned, and I'm assuming that uh, the murderer brought the victim from the parking area up here on Franklin Town Road, walked them down here. Uh, I don't know if it's known if the victim was already deceased or they were actually uh, killed here, but it looks like they set the victim on fire right here, um, and the victim was actually found down inside of this, this sewer slash well, I mean, that's what they're calling it in the, in the press, a well, but it's not really a well, it's a, it's a sewer, so they must have set the body on fire, uh, probably let it burn for a bit, and then dragged it over and dumped it down inside of this this uh, sewer here. Down here we have gloves that the police used uh, probably to pull the victim out of the the uh, storm drain there. And you can see there's more gloves. Um, so the police didn't really clean up that well. Um, they left their crime scene tape here. The envelope, gloves. Uh, it's just really, really uh, terrifying place. <laughs> but um, yeah, all right there, insane. The thing that I keep thinking about, and of course this is all speculation. I think it was more than one person that brought him back here. You know, the, the parking is right there. You can park right there. Is it possible that they were dropped off here? Yes. That's what I'm wondering. Because a vehicle being left there for a while... And how was he killed? Now, it said trauma was the cause of death but that could be anything how is he you know it's obvious right over there on that rock that he was there he was probably you know could he have been shot strangled where's the point where he's unconscious or deceased where they set him on fire. Well, what if they just knocked him to the ground and they banged his head against one of these rocks, rendering him unconscious? That's also a possibility. And the thing is, with the road being right here, uh, bridge. The, you know, the bridge, if they're here at night doing this and they set him on fire, it's possible that, you know, because if we look at this, It's, it's a small area. Yeah. This melted stuff. Is it? Is it? Uh, is that all one big melt? Yeah, it is. It is. It's hard too. Is really that? Hard. Could that be uh, part of a jacket, or could it be fat? No, this is not. Oh my gosh. Wonder, uh, you think that's uh, uh, synthetic? Yeah, some kind of a polyester kind of a mix. Yeah. But this here, what? Let me see that. I mean, it's like really hard. I don't know whether it's hard because it's cold now and it's frozen. It it smells like. Uh, you smell like a fuel. Oil. Yeah. Some kind of. Wait a, a minute. There's there's stuff. Uh, That looks like a piece of, uh, that's like a piece of clothing. Yeah. So it's like a blue material. Yep. Some kind of cloth. 
Man, that is, uh, how is that left here? I know, that's the key, that, that, that's the thing. What, I was I'm, just thinking, why wouldn't it, that have been collected? Unless they didn't It looks like there's more of it. There is. Uh, there is. See? Yeah. There is more of it. It's just it's very creepy here. Yes, very much. It's like uncomfortable, uh, very kind of bad. Feels like negative energy is surrounding this. You were spot. saying this a while ago. This used to be an open road. Yeah. And you could this was just one of the you series drive. of roads you could yeah. drive through the park. Right. So this was closed off with concrete uh, construction blocks in an effort to keep this from happening keep stuff like this from happening but i'm surprised that they haven't made it so you can't park there anymore up there at uh at uh well, you franklin town access for cleaning up but like i said before if this park was really given the investment necessary and cleaned up at the same time improve the quality of life for everybody in this area, maybe reduce the potential for this being a dumping ground for more victims of violence and crime. Okay. Uh-oh. There's some bones there. Please don't say. Shit. Okay, I'll get the fuck out. So Rick, when I was uh when I came out here that night by myself and found all those bones. Right. And then we came back together, right. collected them, and then my neighbor, who's a physician, uh, confirmed that they were not human bones. Okay. Actually, look. Yeah, there's some of them. So, but to think that I was here at night by myself, so and close. just a hundred feet away. A murder was committed. A horrible murder. Yeah, well, we talked to you about that, Dan. I don't even like to be with you in the dark, and you do it by yourself. You're crazy. <laughs> well. Fearless, I should say. You're I'm, fearless. I'm not, you're I'm you're, you're no. full of I'm definitely, definitely not fearless, but I am enthusiastic. Because I like to get stories told, and sometimes... You gotta go. 
you gotta go right This is uh, Winterbourne Avenue, and this is a road that you can still drive on, but it's also kind of hidden away, so it's easy to come here and dump, which uh, people do. It's such a shame, but uh, there's a shirt here cheerleader it's cheerleader love every day huh you can see there's old bottles and trash um, they've actually come through here and and cleaned up some of the uh, stuff that people have dumped but it's a, a never-ending process you can see here some pieces from an old deck that have been torn down and dumped here something might be happening over in the city because that helicopter is circling which means that uh, there's been some kind of crime and they're looking for somebody there's all kind of crap here there's a couch right there Heading over to this bag, which looks like it has shoes in it. Yeah, it's like trash, shoes and clothing. He's definitely moved over here. Might be a pursuit, like a car chase. We'll find out if they're going to come down Winterbourne. Hopefully they don't crash into my car. Look at all these bottles over here. Nice and fluffy. And look. Daffodils. Daffodils in February. It's very strange. More garbage. Mostly tires. People probably... Uh, Probably rolled them down here from the road because these are obviously very old. These have been here for decades. Look at that. So, yeah. And over here we've got uh, this goes down to uh, Franklin Town. And uh, right down this hill here is where they found uh, the Sean Conyers. That's where the well is.
So here I am, three weeks after the murder, and I still have no answers. I thought at this point there would be some information available, a break maybe in the case, and that just wasn't to be. I've been in touch with the homicide detective who's in charge of the case, and I was directed to media relations at the Baltimore City Police Department. T.J. Smith, who's the spokesman for the Baltimore City Police Department, uh, contacted me uh, after I sent him an email. And I had a question. Uh, One of the questions I had was, um, was Vashon still alive when he was found down inside of the well? The reason I asked that question is because in the press, it was reported that paramedics arrived on the scene first and that they uh, pronounced Vashon Conyers dead at the scene. And I was wondering, perhaps maybe he was still living uh, when he was discovered, but uh, it was confirmed by the Baltimore City Police Department that that wasn't true. I was also told that there are no suspects and they are not sure how many possible suspects there could be. TJ Smith ended the email basically saying that uh, they just don't have a lot of information right now about the case. Uh, It's still actively being investigated and there's just not a lot to talk about. You know, we have a killer or killers on the street right now, free, who murdered someone brutally, murdered someone, set them on fire and threw them down into a sewer. It's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying, and I don't know why people are not talking about it. I did bring a few things back from the crime scene. Number one, I brought this envelope. Not that this is any kind of big thing, but it does have a case number, which that may be the case number, it may not be. There was no SD card in this envelope when I found it. One more piece of the puzzle are these pieces of clothing that we found at the crime scene. Now, I don't know if uh, these are pieces of clothing that Vashon Conyers was wearing, or if these were pieces of maybe a rag that was uh, doused in some kind of fuel or accelerant. But if someone from the Baltimore City Police Department sees this and they want these pieces, please just contact me and I will immediately turn them over because I certainly don't want to hold on to them and I don't really know why they were left there to begin with. Hopefully in the next few months we'll have some more answers, a break in the case, hopefully some suspects. We'll have to see, but I'm hoping that this documentary gets out there and the right person sees it who might have a tip. Anyway... Let's have a look down inside that well. The plan was to have Matt go down inside of the well to get some pictures of the bottom. While Matt and Harmon were setting up the rope, I was looking around filming some shots, and I looked down the trail and saw something that disturbed me. The reflection of a sneaker. When I turned my light on very brightly, the reflection moved up into the woods. I hurried the guys along so we could get these shots done, but I was rattled. Sometimes when people commit a murder, they feel guilty, and they go back to the spot where they committed that murder. And I thought for a moment, could it be? Even though I could see deer eyes, unless the deer were wearing sneakers. They're definitely not what I saw. I just wanted to get these shots and get out of here. Uh, there's something back here on the trail. And I don't, I, I don't know if it's an animal or a person. Um, There's a car coming, so I'm going to cut off the light.
All right, I, I don't know what I'm looking at right now. But, uh, now I can't see anything because there's fog. Shit. Nice. There's somebody back there. What? I just saw a sneaker. I, I, uh, like the reflection on a sneaker. Oh, shit. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta get out of here. Let's just throw the thing down in the well. We'll tie, we'll tie my, we'll just tie my camera. Alright, make sure I got enough slack here. We came out here to have a chat and I wanted to get Rick's um, insight and a second pair of eyes uh, on this, this uh, spot. But anyway, I'm, Rick noticed something uh, in, inside of this um, well and it's a, it's a smear mark right here. Uh, and that is probably me. It is most likely when they threw the, the victim in there. When they threw him in there, whatever came off of him during the impact. Yeah, he hit the uh, he hit the wall on the way down, and and that. Oh my God. Okay, so I came out uh, here. Sorry if I'm. I just I came out here uh, to get some pickup shots of the fog and to record sound. I was just at my car, which is right there, and there's a. This is Winterbourne Avenue right here, and there's a. There was a smell like something decaying like a rotting smell and so i just came up here real quick with my flashlight and there's a bag right over here and so i went and got my camera and i'm a little nervous uh to open the bag because there is something inside of it that's dead so somebody uh drag this bag back here. Shit. Somebody has a flat tire on Hilton Park. Shit, there's a car. I hope they just keep going.
This is too creepy. I don't know what I'm looking at. It. Oh, it's an animal. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's a dog. Oh my god. Oh. Uh. Oh no. Oh. oh, the smell. <coughs> you can see. It's got its co dog collar right there. It looks like it was a, some, a pit bull probably. Oh my god. Oh, this is horrible. No. Just the dog. God, this is, uh, it's just, it's like cursed ground or something. It's just crazy. 